Hi everyone, welcome back to Figure It Out. Today we're going to talk about lighting your dioramas. You know, from the very beginning of this hobby, I have really enjoyed putting together these dioramas and then adding some ambient light to them. Just wiring and lighting these dioramas brings a whole new dynamic to what they look like. So what I thought I would do today is let's go through some wiring basics and some lighting basics, some things that you would need to know, some things that I have figured out in the last several months on how to go about lighting your dioramas successfully and making them what you want them to be. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, well, let's start by talking about some of the tools that you're going to need if you are going to be successful adding lights to your diorama. Well, first you need to start off with a pair of wire cutters and wire strippers. These are from Klein Tools. I've liked this pair for quite a while, especially when I've done home repair. They have the wire cutters here and the strippers here. They work very fast, they're very sharp, so I do like this uh, pair. They're lightweight, easy to work with, so you're gonna need a pair of wire cutters. You're also going to need a soldering iron. And so this particular soldering iron, I'll put some links in the description, but uh, I did buy this on Amazon. Soldering irons do not need to be expensive. All it's gotta have is a tip that heats up pretty hot. This one actually has a little a temperature dial on it, but I don't really change it that much. The thing I do like about it is it does have a little LED indicator when it is on and when it is off. Uh, I was a little intimidated when I started out when it came to soldering, but it's a lot easier than you might think. Don't be intimidated by it. Just get you a soldering iron, give it a shot. Only thing you need to remember is don't touch anything from this point forward. So it, mine has a little safety handle on it so I can hold it without getting burned, but anything here, uh, that heats up really, really hot. And so you just have to have awareness when you're working with a soldering iron not to touch your skin with it. So you need a soldering iron. A tool that I feel like is indispensable when it comes to working with a wiring is going to be what they call helping hands. And this is a soldering station called Helping Hands. Um, mine I bought at a local tool supply, Harbor Freight Tools. If you have that in your area, it's uh, a pretty, low cost discount place. Mine did come with a magnifying glass that attached up here on this bar, but I didn't like it because I use magnifying glasses and so they were the magnifying glass itself kind of got in the way and my room is fairly well lit so I didn't need the LED light that came with it. But these alligator clips, 100% you need these because if you try to hold wire together and then somehow grab your soldering iron, it is going to be next to impossible. And yes, you can tape some stuff down and maybe work without it. This particular soldering station was $9. Now, they have some on Amazon that are literally over $100. That is super overkill, you don't need that. Uh, the thing I like about this, the little additional thing, is that it has this place for a sponge. I can wet this sponge, have a water reservoir here, and when I put the sponge, it, it allows me to clean the tip of the, so of, of the soldering iron, clean the solder off of it, and so that's a big help. I also choose to use heat shrink wrap when it comes to my wiring connections, and so you'll see that on some of the videos but you add this little heat shrink tubing and then you need to heat it up. And so I bought a hot air gun on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description as well that came with a bunch of heat shrink tubing. This little um, hot air gun does not get as hot as some of the other ones that you'll get, the big blow dryer looking ones. But this one's super easy to use and it does the trick what, what you need it to do when it comes to the heat shrink tubing, shrinking that down. Some people use a lighter. I don't like using an open flame. It's not as precise. You can't control it as well. So this was also fairly inexpensive. So I would suggest that you use that too. And then, of course, you're going to need some wire. And this wire that I have been using is left over from a project where I was installing a garage door opener. You need, it's doorbell wire, telephone wire, low volta voltage wire. It needs to be two, um, two strands. In other words, you need a, a, a hot side, which you can see on this. There's a, a basically one that, let's see if we can get that to focus. A, a red stripe on one side, and then it is a non-stripe on the other side. So that differentiates the two pieces of wire that are held together. 
This is 22 gauge wire. You don't really need much more than that because all LED lights are very low voltage. You do not need a high voltage wire. It is not stranded wire. This is solid core or solid copper wire. Uh, and I don't, I don't really like using the stranded wire. I think it's a little more difficult to work with. So I use this solid low voltage uh, 22 gauge copper wire. So you need to get you some wire as well. All right, well, let's just start by talking about power. You're gonna need to understand voltage just a little bit. Now, when I started doing some research, I kind of overcomplicated it. You don't need to do that. You just need to know that you're aiming for the same voltage uh, as marked for your LED diodes as it is your power source. But you need to understand the voltage because your diodes, these LED lights that you have, either you get these little ones that are singular, like this one is, or you can get the ones that are pre-wired, they come with a certain amount of voltage. And so that's the amount of push of electricity you're gonna need in order to power these things appropriately. This little one that I have here, this little one here is three volts. This one that's pre-wired is 12 volts, all right? So just a little demonstration of what power does. You can tell this coin battery uh, on the front, it's, a, it's one of the CR2032s. You can see on here that this is a three volt battery. You can see the little three V on there. So all these little coin batteries are typically uh, three volts. I have a whole bag of LED bulbs. These are all the three volt LED diodes. And so again, if I don't know which pole, the long one or the short one is gonna be positive and negative because they change, I can just try it and see. So on this one, the longer one is the positive side and the short one is the negative side. So you can see how I can light the, the diode just by putting it on the battery. <clears throat> so this is a three volt, three volt battery right here and these are three volt bulbs. Now this is a 12 volt uh, bulb, which means it takes a little bit more push to light it the way that you want it to light. Now, uh, there's a lot of guys online that will take the nine volts and they'll light their 12 volt bulbs with them because that's obviously one of the things that you can do. And I can put it on here just on these contact points and it does a decent job of lighting it. So it's much, much brighter than it is if I use the coin battery, but not as bright as if I use the 12 volt battery itself. Now talking about batteries, you know, we have a couple of configurations here and there's a number of different ones that you can uh, work with. But when I look at a coin battery that's three volt, um, it's a much smaller battery. And so it'll light anything at three volts, but it won't necessarily light it for that long. And so batteries, the bigger they are, the longer they will light something. And so um, I have here a double A battery, two battery setup. Now your double A batteries, your triple uh, A batteries, the um, even your D batteries, those kinds of batteries, the big batteries, they're all 1.5 volts. And what that means is if you stack them, they actually stack um, numerically and so I can take two 1.5 batteries put them together and I can make a 3 volt power source if that makes sense so even though these batteries are much larger than this battery the voltage of these two exactly the same so I can take um, this diode here which you can see um, <clears throat> and I can take the positive on this end and the negative on this end and we can create a current again and light this diode using this setup. Now I prefer to use these little um, pre-wired battery gang packs that you can get. You can get like 20 of them for just a few bucks on Amazon. I'll put some links in the description. I prefer these just because the AA batteries last so much longer than the coin batteries. So you need to be aware of what 
your voltages on your bulbs to get um, the maximum brightness that you want and you need to know your power source, like what that's gonna look like. All right, well, let's talk about bulbs for a minute. Bulbs come in basically three different configurations. Now this is basic. I'm telling you, you can find bulbs a lot of different ways, but when it comes to the small LED diodes that you'll need for your dioramas, there's kind of three different ways that they are presented. I will tell you, you can get various voltages as well, but to keep things simple, I would suggest moving to just three volts or 12 volts. Most of your LED diodes will come in either of those. So some uh, are just the loose diodes, which you can see here, these diodes, let me get a blue one so you can see it. Um, these diodes here have a positive pole and a negative pole and there we go. They have a positive pole and a negative pole and they just need to be connected to a power source for them to work. It's pretty easy to get these to go and soldering these is pretty easy. You just have to make sure you understand which, which pole is positive, which pole is positive and which pole is negative. You can also get the LEDs that come pre-wired with what I call a tail. So they already have wires attached to them the bulb itself has um, some heat shrink tubing that's already holding the connections together. And then they have a black wire, which is the negative side and a red wire, which is the positive side. The strip lighting is what I used when I did the Gunslinger diorama. And this strip lighting is really cool. It is really excellent. And so what you need to know is there are places on the wire itself where they're called the cut lines and you can see these little squares are going to be the diodes and this little copper these two little copper uh, places with the line going through them that is one of the cut spaces these are actually the contact points and so wherever that uh, copper contact point with the black line you can cut it along that black line there and it'll still uh, the part that you wire up will still work uh, you can see here on the end, I have cut it through those, um, at those copper points. They're also labeled. And so you can see that this one, you can see it's labeled 12 volt and it has a plus on this top part. And so that means that this is designated as the negative. It actually says ground, G R N or G and D, so ground. And so that's how this particular strip is wired up. They have adhesive um, backing on them so you can peel this off and press it to your project. This particular light strip, the adhesive on the back is really strong. Like I was really kind of uh, excited about how I didn't have to glue it. So if I take a power source like this 12 volt battery and I connect the positive and negative leads, so I can just touch it to that copper piece and then the ground to this one, I should get it to light up. So that's what it looks like. Let's say you wanted to light these two LED diodes. Well, first thing I would need is some power. So I would get out my three volt power pack. That's two AA batteries at 1.5 volts a piece. So I would get this battery pack out. <clears throat> uh, then I would need a switch so I would get a switch so I could put it, I would break it here at the positive terminal. And then I would need some wires. Now I'm gonna wire these in a series, which means what I wanna do is I wanna take uh, the positive to a positive here and then a positive here to this next one. So I wanna go from the positive, 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 and then negative back, negative back to here. Now I've kind of twisted some wires together so you can see what that might look like because it does look a little bit different once you start getting it going. But uh, if you see, I've got uh, my red strand is here. So that's my red and white coming in. This will be a positive and then it'll come out to this positive. And then I have a negative here that'll hit this one and then negative to come back to here. So when I wire this up, essentially what it would look like is it would look like uh, this here and I would have one diode there, one diode there. And so I would have a power coming out from positive, hit the switch, 
go along the positive side, hit the positive pole on this diode, come out to this positive pole on this diode, then back from the negative to the negative to the negative. And that's a series. There's um, other ways to wire it too. If you wanted to, you would not want to, but I'm just telling you, you could do a, a positive lead from here back to the switch, a positive lead back to the switch, and a negative lead and a negative lead here, and it kind of spider web that out. I would never suggest you would do it that way. That's really not a great way to do it. You're better to run a series than it is um, to, uh, you know, kind of have everything coming from one. It really starts clogging up your spaces as well. So that's not how you should do it. Always run a series on mine. And that's really why you need to plan your builds. You really need to plan how you're going to wire because if you're trying to solder these things in after the fact, it can be really difficult. If you've already put a lot of pieces in place, if you're trying to backlight some stuff at the end, it can be really tough. So pre-plan your wiring, and that's really, really important. Well, as always, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you have gained some knowledge and confidence to get out there and start lighting your own dioramas. I would love to see some of your projects if you want to send them my way, see what you're able to accomplish. If you've liked the video, then hit that like button and please subscribe. That's a huge help to me as well. Again, thank you for watching. Figure it out.